Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering a member question from Shruti, who wanted to know how to create and animate a Rubik's Cube in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member at cgshortcuts.com or over on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So this one was actually a bit harder to figure out than I expected. First, I tried creating the twisting effect with MoGraph effectors. But that was a big fail because I couldn't get the clones to rotate together at once. Then I tried to do it with parent constraints, which kind of worked, but the setup ended up being super complex and not very practical. But then I stumbled onto a little setting that I've never actually used before, which allowed me to get something like this. So if you're intrigued, let's start from the beginning and see how I did it. We'll kick things off by making a simple Rubik's Cube, which is made of several moving blocks, for which we can use a cube. And I want our Rubik's Cube to be about the same size it would be in real life. So I'll make each block about two centimeters in size, which is pretty tiny in our scene. So we'll zoom in and we need a bunch of these to form the larger cube shape. So we'll whack it into a cloner object, holding Alt when we click that so it's automatically applied to our cube. And we want our clones to be arranged as a grid. And as our blocks are two centimeters wide, we'll set the spacing between these to be the same. And to complete the grid, we'll make it three by three by three. And there's our basic Rubik's Cube shape. And I'll also make the more detailed version available to download as well if you need it. So now we need a way to animate this and make it function like a real Rubik's Cube by twisting groups of blocks around to complete the puzzle. And I actually figured this out by taking a look at how an actual Rubik's Cube works. As you can see here, all the blocks rotate around a central pivot point at the center of the cube. So we need to emulate that in Cinema 4D as well. So if I was to grab our cloner and hit C on the keyboard to make it editable, it'll turn that into a null and separate out each cube as its own object. And if I select a few of these, you'll see that each cube has its own axis at the center of each individual object. But if we want this to work like our real Rubik's Cube, we need the axis of each cube to be at the center of the grid instead. So let's undo making it editable and instead, if we right click on our cloner and choose connect objects and delete, we flatten all those clones down into one object and inherit the access point of the cloner itself, which happens to be right here in the center of all the clones. And now to break this apart again into all the individual blocks, we'll hit shift C to bring up the commander and type in island to bring up the polygon islands to objects command which is going to split all the separate meshes apart again for us. So if we pop this open, here's all the individual clones again. Only this time, they've inherited the access point from the center of the original cloner instead. Meaning we can rotate each block around the center of our Rubik's Cube, just like you would in real life. So let's do exactly that and give it a try. We'll start by twisting this group of blocks on the right here. So I'll grab the rectangle selection tool and select just these blocks. And I'll double check we've got the right one selected by moving these. And that looks good. So we'll animate these by first enabling auto keying. And we'll set a keyframe for our selected cubes on the first frame of our timeline by clicking here on the record PLA button, which sets a keyframe in their current position. Then we'll go ahead to maybe frame 12 and switch to our rotate tool. And we'll rotate this from the center of our Rubik's cube. So I'll just give this a quick turn 90 degrees this way and you can hold shift to snap it into place. And because we had auto keying activated, we've now animated that motion. So things are looking good so far. So let's then twist this top section around as well. So same deal, we'll grab the selection tool again, grab just those blocks, move ahead a little on our timeline, set a keyframe at that position, go ahead to maybe frame 32, grab our rotate tool and twist these around, which adds another auto keyframe. And now if we play this through, it almost works, but not quite. If we step through this slowly, something weird starts to happen with the blocks that get twisted twice. They start to separate a little bit. And it happens again on our next turn as well, where these guys that moved in the first turn are also breaking apart. And this is actually to do with how the keyframes are interpolated. So we'll need to tweak our method very slightly to get this to work correctly. So if we undo all of that back to before we made our first keyframe and we'll select those blocks again. Before we try rotating these, 
if we take a look at the coordinates tab of our selected cubes, you'll see a little option down here that you've probably never even noticed before called Quartinian Rotation, which basically allows us to rotate objects along the shortest path possible, which means we'll get a more linear interpolation, which should work quite nicely when rotating a bunch of objects together as one. So let's enable that, switch back to our Rotate tool again, and set a keyframe in the starting position on the first frame. Then we'll move ahead to frame 12 and try twisting these again. And if we play that back, that's working correctly. So let's do the top section again as well. We'll select just these blocks and we'll make sure Quartinian Rotation is enabled for these as well. So we'll need to click this twice to activate that on the selector blocks. And now we can go through the rest of the steps again. So rotate tool, set a keyframe in this position, move ahead on the timeline and rotate these to give us our automatic keyframe. And now if we play this, the animation now works exactly how we want it to. And if we step through this, none of those blocks are breaking apart anymore either. So we can carry on twisting different sections of this around. Let's try turning the midsection this time. We'll go ahead a bit and select those cubes in the middle and check we've got the right ones. And if your whole cube is being selected instead, we can undo that. And yeah, we might just need to move all those blocks out of the null. So I'll grab all of those and plonk them out here. And if we try that again, we can now select those a bit easier. So we'll go ahead to maybe frame 40, do our Quartinian trick on this selection of cubes, grab our rotate tool, set a keyframe, and go ahead to complete our twisting manoeuvre. And I think just for fun, let's twist this around 180 degrees instead. And now let's see what we get. Twist one, twist two, and a bigger twist three. Perfect. So that is the basic setup for animating a Rubik's Cube. You can obviously twist this as many times as you like in any direction as well to complete your puzzle. And if you want the twisting motion to be a bit more interesting and not so linear, we could grab all of our cubes. And if we go up to tags, animation tags, we can add a track modifier to all of these, which allows us to add secondary animation to each object. So if we set this to spring mode, increase the strength and the stiffness, we now get something a little more interesting like this, where the pieces snap into place with a bit of bounce back. So now to add colors to our blocks, we can go to the end of our animation where our Rubik's Cube is in its final completed state. Then we'll grab our selection tool again. And if we wanted to color these faces blue, for example, we could grab all of those, switch to polygon mode, and using our brush selection, we could grab all of those faces. Then we'll create a new material and make it blue and just apply that directly to those faces. Okay, so that's that side done. Let's make this side green. So same thing again, we'll switch to object mode and grab those blocks, then back to polygons and select only the faces we need. Then we'll make another material, which will be green and apply that to those. And now if we rewind and play this, our Rubik's Cube animates to completion. And that's pretty much how I created our example render. So you just need to go ahead and color all the faces and model a more detailed Rubik's Cube. Or you could save yourself some time and grab the project file or complete render ready Redshift version from our website at the link below. And if you found this video useful, feel free to leave a comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and resources. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com or visit us on Patreon. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.